Hello and welcome, sisters and brothers, to the Fellowship of the Spirit. The precept that we're going to deal with today is called God's Word or Nothing. God's Word or Nothing. Sisters and brothers, there's only one way back to the right of the tree of life. There's only one way to salvation. There's only one way to the kingdom of our Messiah and one way to our kingdom of our Heavenly Father. Only one way, sisters and brothers, and that's through his written word, because that is his voice. So it's either God's word, or it's nothing. And we're going to start this off in Proverbs, the fourth chapter. Proverbs, the fourth chapter. God's word, or nothing. Proverbs 4, and I'm just going to read a couple of verses. I'm going to start this off in verse 1. Hear ye, children, the instruction of a father, and attend to no understanding. For I give you good doctrine. Forsake ye not my law. I give you good doctrine. Don't forsake my law. This is talking about the word, God's laws, commandments, statutes, and judgments. Let's go to 2 Timothy, and we're, uh, the, the third chapter, and let's look at why. 2 Timothy 3. Second Timothy three, and I'm going to pick this up at verse fifteen. Second Timothy three and verse fifteen, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. These scriptures are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith in Christ Jesus, through faith in our Messiah. Verse 16, because all scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. That is why it's the scripture or nothing. If it's not in scripture, we don't pay any attention to it. If we can't find something in Scripture, we rightly divide and discern to the best of our ability to figure out how we're going to address that particular precept or situation. But it's either God's Word or it's nothing, sisters and brothers. No adding, no taking away from it. None. Let's go to 2 Peter, the first chapter. 2 Peter, the first chapter. 2 Peter 1. 2 Peter 1, and I'm going to start this off in verse 20. 2 Peter 1 and verse 20. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the Scripture is of any private interpretation. That's why it's Scripture or nothing. Because nothing was came up with by man that just decided he was going to think of something and write it down. Yes, man wrote the book, but God inspired the writing of the book. Verse 21. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Holy men of God spake as they were given inspiration to do so. Let's go to Matthew, the 15th chapter. Matthew, the 15th chapter. Matthew 15. And sisters and brothers, we're going to start this right off in verse 1. 15 and 1. Then came to Jesus scribes and Pharisees, which were of Jerusalem, saying, Why do thy disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. But he answered and said unto them, Why do ye also transgress the commandment of God by your traditions? Why do you transgress the commandment of God by your traditions? You're not supposed to have the scriptures twisted to your lifestyle. You're supposed to twist your lifestyle to fit the scriptures. Verse 4, for God commanded, saying, Honor thy father and mother, and he that curseth father and mother, let him die to death. But ye say, Whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, It is a gift by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me, and honor not his father or his mother, he shall be free. Thus have ye made the commandment of God of none effect by your tradition traditions of our fathers, sisters and brothers. Verse 7, ye hypocrites, 
Well did Isaiah prophesy of you, saying, This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth, and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. Teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. Sunday church. Lunar Sabbaths. God's done away with the commandments. He's done it all. He's fulfilled prophecy. Them two, them old commandments are too hard to keep anyway. All them little things, Christmas and Easter, Halloween, the Easter Bunny, Valentine's Day, Sweetest Day, Boss's Day, all that garbage. Mother's Day, Father's Day, if you don't keep them. And you see birthdays, if you're persuaded not to keep those. Sisters and brothers, it's either God's word or it's nothing. Let's go to Acts, the 17th chapter. Acts, the 17th chapter. Acts 17. I was thinking about something, but I'm not going, I'm not going to alter from this. That's how I start getting turned around. Acts 17. Acts 17, and I'm going to pick this up at verse 10. Acts 17 and verse 10. And the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night unto Berea, who coming thither went into the synagogue of the Jews. Verse 11, these were more noble than those in Thessalonica, and that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily whether those things were so. Therefore many of them believed also of honorable women which were Greeks and of men, not a few. A bunch of people believed because of the word of God, sisters and brothers. Because it was either God's word or it was nothing. They didn't start preaching their own thing. They put the truth on the table and let the truth convict the heart like it's supposed to do. God's word goes out. It does not come back void. Let's continue. Let's go to Deuteronomy, the fourth chapter. Deuteronomy, the fourth chapter. Deuteronomy 4. And I'm going to pick this right up at verse 1. Deuteronomy 4. And verse 1, now therefore hearken, O Israel, unto the statutes and unto the judgments which I teach you, for to do them, that ye may live, and go in and possess the land which the Lord God of your fathers giveth you. Ye shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall ye diminish aught from it, that ye may keep the commandments of the Lord your God which I command you. This is Moses getting it straight from the mouth of God, giving it straight to the nation of Israel, sisters and brothers. Your eyes have seen what the Lord did before of Baal Peor. For all the men that followed Baal Peor, the Lord thy God hath destroyed them from among you. But ye did cleave unto the Lord your God, are alive every one of you this day. Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as the Lord my God commanded me, that ye should do so in the land, whether you go to possess it. And you know he didn't add or take away from it, because he's teaching them not to. Keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations, which shall hear all these statutes and say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. Verse 7, For what nation is there so great, who hath God so nigh unto them, as the Lord our God is in the things that, the, that we call upon him for? And what nation is there so great that hath statutes, and judgment so righteous is all this law which I set before you this day. That's righteousness. The keeping of the law, sisters and brothers. Only take heed to thyself and keep thy soul diligently. Lest thou forget the things which thine eyes have seen. And lest they depart from thy heart all the days of thy life. But teach them thy sons and thy son's son. Nothing but the word of God, sisters and brothers. Go to Proverbs, the 30th chapter. Proverbs 30. Proverbs 30. <clears throat> and I'm going to read two verses, 5 and 6. Proverbs 30 and verse 5. Every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. Add thou not unto his words, lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. Sisters and brothers, it's God's word or nothing. The last place. Revelation, the 22nd chapter. Revelation 22, and this will be it. 
for this particular precept. Revelation 22, and sisters and brothers, I'm going to pick this up at verse 11. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. <coughs> Excuse me. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. And the spirit and the bride say, come. And let him that heareth say, come. And let him that is a thirst come. And whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. The Lord is just laying it out there, man. This is out there. It's free. Come get this thing. Get right back to the tree of life, sisters and brothers. This is awesome news. Verse 18, he's going to continue. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book, if any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. Verse 19, and if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. Sisters and brothers, you can lose your, your place in the book of life. And you can be an outcast from the kingdom. Because it's either God's word or it's nothing. Verse 20. He which testifieth these things saith, Surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so, come Lord Jesus. In the last verse in the book, verse 21. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Sisters and brothers, it's God's word or nothing. Not adding, not taking away. Making it your lifestyle to the best of your ability. So I'd like to thank you for the opportunity to rightly divide God's word. And I hope somebody got something from these scriptures.